Radio Bay in Waco is very big and shows a good construction. This seems to be a good balance between strength and lightness. All that space makes getting at the bolts that secure the bottom wings a lot easier. The biggest problems I had during assembly was getting the wheel pan and the fairings in place. There was lots of trial and error and this is as good as I can get them fit. The center section of the upper wing is very strong and we can leave this in place rather than take it off and put it back on every time we fly the plane. The upper wing is 91 inches long and I'm real happy that it breaks down into two separate pieces. That makes transporting and storing this plane a lot easier. The bottom wing panels also come off easily. Both wings have ailerons with the bottom wing driving the ailerons in the top wing. The outboard metal struts make sure that these wings stay together. As with any biplane, they add a little time to assembly and disassembly. The struts are secured to brackets on the wings with pins and these clips. I'm already looking for a source for these clips because I know these are going to leave before too long. The brackets and wings are bent to 90 degrees even though the struts run at an angle to the upper wing. I bent all of the brackets a little bit just so they matched up to the struts better. That little bend made getting the pins in a little easier also. The upper and lower ailerons are connected with a simple rod. I secured them with 440 bolts and nylon insert nuts to make it easier for assembly at the field. A big reason for getting the Waco was to put my radial engine in it. The kit comes with a plastic fake radial that's still in a box someplace. I know somebody's going to complain about there not being any grill on the front of the cowl, but they can just go wait in the bus. The upper wing has two aluminum wing tubes in each side. I kind of like that idea because you're not pushing one wing tube out the other side when you put a wing panel on. The bottom wing panels are strengthened by a pair of long wing tubes that go all the way through the fuselage. The tail feathers are very realistic and permanently mounted. All of the hinges were prepared well and that made getting nice tight gaps very easy. The Waco comes with a full sheet of stickers, but I've been playing with a machine in my shop that cuts vinyl and covering, so I've been playing with that and made all the graphics on this plane myself. The red you see on the leading edges was applied at the factory, but I did everything else myself. I was pleasantly surprised to see the painted pilots that come with this kit, and they dress up the large removable top to the fuselage. I also liked that that removable section is secured by a pair of very good spring latches. Phoenix includes this simple device for checking the CG. This is much like the ones that we used to get with the Aeroworks planes. And that simple device makes it easy for one person to check the CG. And it shows that mine's balanced very well. This is the first time that we started the radial in this plane, so it took a little while to get fuel from the tank to the carb. One of the things I really like about the radial is once fuel gets to the carb, it starts right away. Now that sounds like a Waco. Starting the plane in the yard like this lets me check that the fuel system is all working properly. And it lets me make sure that I've got the throttle set up right and that the carbs adjusted pretty close anyway. The rest we have to do in the air, and that'll be the next time we get some decent weather. 